Hello. Hello, my friends. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Ah, very well. I thought that you were not able to hear me. Very well, thank you. Okay. So let's wait just a little bit more to check if people are able to, to join, okay? Okay. Very well. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, I had a, a little emergency and then uh, I'm in a different location and with different resources. I'm actually giving the class with the cell phone. So everything's going to be fine, but I won't be able to just check some other details here. By now, let me just check something. All right. And uh, I will take the attendance only for the ones that are here already. So I see here that uh, we have Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Yes, Present. Thank you. David Galdames. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez. Present. Perfect. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brang Mejia. Present teacher. Good. And very well. So let me then just check. I'm going to present something here right now.
Oh, no, I can't. I'm learning this here, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And here we go. Are you able to see my, my screen? No, right? No, teacher. All right. Hold on a second. Yeah, I need a different one. Hold on. This is the one. All right. Yeah, I had an emergency. I'm actually in a different country right now. And I'm giving the class with, uh, with my cell phone. That's why you see two screens for me. So remotely, I had to turn on my computer. I mean, it was something very, very, complicated oh, one second. you need teacher to one of us something you can send the link yeah right so let me just check here the thing is that i'm just looking for something uh, let's see here And I have the presentation open, but it's not letting me go through that one. Well, if this were Google, it would be totally different, but this is Zoom. I'm not that familiar with that over the cell phone. Actually, I, I didn't know that I, I could record the call from here, but uh, now I made a setup and now I'm able to, but I didn't have the time to check the other things. Okay, because what we're going to check today is about um, some curiosities about English. So that's what we're going to check today. So we're going to speak about ways for us to improve um, our language. So the first thing that then we can do is uh, you can share your best practices. So let's say, for example, David, uh, when you have your free time, what do you usually do to practice English or to, to improve, let's say? Okay. Um, yeah. I like I, I like to read, read books, English books. Okay. Uh, and I like to watch videos. There are some uh, YouTube videos that uh, with the conversations, with the... Uh, that, that kind of video that uh, show you how to to use these uh, contractions that uh, the native uh, speaker English do. Okay. Uh, like uh, this, uh, this uh, series of videos that learn English with uh, friends, for example. And they they show you how to speak uh, the, the guys in this in this area, friends, and uh, they show you what are the contractions, what are the, the phrase that they are trying to say they say, but they contract it. And that is uh, very useful for, for uh, learning how the native speaker speak. It is something important for me. Okay, very well. Uh, something that happens in this kind of situations is that, um, let's say you, you need to compare about the way that you are speaking and the way that they are speaking are you able to to identify the things like that yes I, I i know that i am not uh, using sometimes the right uh, sound of the vowel or the right sound of the the combination of letters that uh, they do how they put uh, some letters together and, and how they do the sound the sound this combined sound 
And uh, I seen I, I need to improve a lot, but I, I was trying. <laughs> okay, very well. That is interesting. Okay, and uh, when you identify some words, oh, okay, how do you identify some words that are not pronounced correctly, for example? That is one of the most difficult things that we do or we want to uh, improve whenever we are in the advance. So how do you do that? Uh, well, if, if we are talking about that videos, that videos show you the first part, the subtitles, and then they, they play again the, the same part of the video, but without subtitles. But you are uh, knowing what part of the video you are getting, what part you are not getting. And uh, I, I identify some, uh, for example, some uh, the, the letter U have uh, three sounds. Three sounds, a short sound, a long sound, and and another sound that I I, I not identify uh, well, and uh, uh, for example, uh, I, this day I was talking with the with the boys of ninth grade about the bound and unbound, uh, uh, talking about uh, limits or borders. Uh, what is a uh, bound bound interval or Unbound interval and that sound of you is a difficult time for me. And the other sound that is difficult for me is uh, the the pass of the birds. Some some birds. I I I know there are three sounds. Three sounds. Uh, ed uh, sound of t and uh, I don't remember the other now. But but this, this kind of word sometimes is difficult for me too. Yeah, that is true. Actually, you have touched one of the most important things in English. And those things are, I mean, the way that some other people are, are able to, to identify that we are in a different country, that English is not our first language. So a question for everybody, how do you, how do you identify when you use the EID sound, the D sound, or the T sound? Do you remember that? Uh, I, I remember that it is, let me see if about the, uh, sometimes it's the letters that are the end of the, of the phrase of the verb. Uh, for example, the, is the bird uh, ends in ed? There is a sound, something like that. I, I I don't remember well the others, but it's something like that. Okay, very good. And actually, you are right. I mean, sometimes the problem is that we know the rules, but we don't remember those whenever we are speaking, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, that is a very good tip. So we need to be careful about that one. But the problem is that, and we need to remember that one whenever we're speaking. Very good, thank you, David. Who else wants to, to share some best practices whenever you are learning English? Can you repeat the question, teacher? Yeah, what best practices can you share with everybody when you are learning English? Uh, well, in my case, maybe listening and also uh, discuss with other people uh, that speak English. Maybe that improve a lot because uh, you improve your, your uh, listening and your, you improve your speaking as well. Okay, that is a very good tip. So, yeah, and yes, you are then, able to... Uh, go ahead. Uh, also, could be watch uh, kids' movies with sub subtitles, maybe to, to learn a new vocabulary. So, I think so that those could be a good advice. Well, well yeah. advice. 
definitely. Those are very good because you are able to see the words and then check the pronunciation. And sometimes uh, whenever you are watching, for example, a video or a movie, you are able to understand the meaning of the word, uh, even if you don't look for that in a dictionary, right? So that is also a very good tip. Nice. Uh, anybody else wants to share any practice, any good practice that you do whenever you want to improve your English? In my case, teacher, maybe it's, <laughs> I think it's not a best practice, but yeah, but um, I like to play video games. Yeah. So I try to to enter to lobbies, to, to lobbies who, which, which are uh, people who talk in English or who speak in English. So uh, if we are chasing something, someone in, in, in the game, uh, or if some someone is chasing us, uh, obviously we communicate each other in English. Yeah, and it's really hard try to understand them, but because you can find there anyone, yeah, from any country. Mostly they are from uh, United States, yeah, but also. They are from Canada, yeah. And the, the, the accent is very different. I, I think in, in, the, in the cases or in the, in the opportunities that I had in, a, in the same lobby with the people or with a person who is talking in, in Canadian English for saying something, yeah, it's really different, yeah. But for the accent, yeah. And also in the United States, if you if you play with someone in, in Texas or Houston or something like this, the accent is kind of different uh, from a people who is connecting, for example, from New York or from another region, yeah. And also uh, there are many, many people who is talking not like us, yeah, not, uh, they, they speak uh, very fast, very uh, contracted, yeah, in, in a collo colloquial, maybe, colloquial way, not in a formal way, yeah. So you have to understand them and try to figure out what I, what are, what are they talking uh, to you in order to not to get killed or get uh, something like this? Yeah. And like David said, uh, the other uh, partner uh, said, also, I like to watch movies and TV series. Yeah. I like to watch them in English. Uh, sometimes with subtitles, sometimes only in English. Yeah, it depends, I think, the, the kind of series that I am watching or maybe a movie that I'm watching. Uh, if, if I need, yeah, to turn on the subtitles or not, yeah. Uh, it, it, this is, I think, a, a good practice, yeah. And also listening to music, yeah. Uh, I I like I like I really like some something. Uh, I like music in English, so I like to um, to find a video with uh, obviously the song and the subtitles and the traduction. Yeah, in order to. Um, to understand myself, yeah. Just for, um, for example, I I thought that the song was telling something like uh, um, something, some some something, yeah. But with I read uh, the the caption, yeah, or, or the subtitle, I understand that. Sometimes I was mistaken or sometimes I was right. Yeah. So for me, it's, it really, 
it really works. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that is a. I don't. I I can't listen. You. Teach. Whenever you listen to music, it's difficult. It's difficult sometimes to understand because since they have a pattern that has to match the music itself, sometimes they have to rush and say the words very fast, or sometimes pronunciation is kind of uh, difficult. And that is a very good exercise. That is a very advanced exercise. So if anybody wants to give it a try on that one, that is also very nice. I mean, to understand, let's say that you play a song that you don't know what is that about and, and try to understand just by listening uh, the words. And then you can, of course, uh, look for the lyrics and then check into that one. Uh, very good, that is a very good. Actually, I don't know if I told you before that one, but I never went to English classes. I mean, I learned with music. Uh, I really liked uh, music. I, when I was 10 years old, I, I went into rock music and I uh, translated the, the songs with the dictionary, not with any other tool, but with dictionary. And uh, sing, I sang the song, so it was a very good practice. And that's the way I learned. I mean, yes, I understand grammar right now that I'm, an adult, but at that time it was a very good thing. So, and uh, movies definitely is one of the best things that we can do because, yeah, you are able to sometimes to check the subtitles in English, of course, or to learn a new vocabulary to check things. And other thing that you mentioned also that is very important uh, or that happens is that, yeah, whenever you go to other countries or when you speak with people from different regions, that is difficult, even, even for uh, people that are native, it's very, very difficult. I have another question for you guys. Um, what do you believe is the most difficult tense in English? In your opinion, simple present, the past perfect, the simple past, which one do you think is the most difficult tense? For me, it's present perfect. Present perfect. Why? Why do you think that, uh, Dora? For, for the verse is, a, is in a participle. It's a memory. All verbs. So. That is true. Yeah, that makes that difficult. So you have to learn that in, uh, in present and then in simple plus. And then in past participle, right? So that makes that a little bit difficult. And yeah, you are right. So you need to learn that by heart. You need yes. to memorize that one, right? Could you give us an, an advice to practice the present perfect? Uh, I believe that one of the things that you can do with that one is uh, to, to speak in general, not a... I mean, for activities that you have done, um, for example, when you speak about experiences, then you have to use that one. That is the most effective way for you to practice the present perfect. Uh, let me ask you, are you able to see my presentation now? No, no. teacher. No, okay. Not well. yet. Okay, yeah, I'm working on that one in the meantime, so let's continue. So uh, yes, uh, with the present uh, perfect, if you speak about experiences, for example, I have done this, I have gone to this place. Uh, and then if you stop, for example, and you see a verb or you uh, want to say something and you don't know what is that verb like, then you can look for that one. But try to try to use that one, try to um, use and speak about experiences. And actually that is the first slide I was going to present you. Let me read it to you, it says, the present perfect tense is an English verb tense used for past actions that are related to or continue into the present. It's easily recognized by the auxiliary verbs. You know that that is have or has, right? Third person. And also um, the present perfect is one of the most complicated because there's not always a direct translation in other languages. So uh, that happens, that happens a lot that according to what I was checking, these are like interesting facts about English. Uh, for the most of the people that are learning English as second language, the present perfect tense is the most difficult. Uh, 
also because sometimes it's not clear, right? Sometimes it's like um, you you say something that started in the past and it still continues, or the experience happened in the past and finished already, but you don't say the exact time. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of variations on that. That makes this tense kind of difficult. So anybody wants to share like a good, a uh, best practice on how to improve in the present uh, perfect tense? Could be I have played soccer. That's why I know how to kick the ball. Very good. So that is a very good example. So when you speak about experiences that you have done before, that is it. That is the best. I mean, that is the, the main usage of this tense, and that is going to help you doing a, a good practice on this one. Uh, so you can, I mean, for example, if you have a person that you can speak with, and you try to use this one, try to speak with about experiences that happened in the past and continue. Sometimes there are clauses like the one that you used. Sometimes in the first part of the clause, you will have present perfect tense. And on the other one, you will have any other, any other uh, tense like present or simple past, right? So that happens a lot that sometimes there is a combination of that one. Another tense that is also kind of difficult is the passive voice. I guess you have checked that already, right? The passive voice. Do you remember that? Yes, that yeah, that's right. Okay, the passive voice, the problem that it has is that you can combine all the tenses. All the tenses can be used in that one. So for example, that is a sentence in passive voice. All the tenses can be used. So we use can be used, that is the passive voice. Or can have been done. So something like that. So that makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, so anybody wants to share a best practice for the present perfect? To improve that one that you have identified that helped you whenever you saw that tense in the English class? Most passive, passive voice. It could be passive voice or the present perfect. That are the, the two most difficult tenses. Uh, so it's kind I, of. I need... uh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was going to say that practice is the best, right? If you listen to that one or if you use it, that is the best. So the best recommendation for you is to, to practice and continue to that one, right? So I have any uh, some other facts here. So for example, um, do you know which is the oldest word in English? Nope. What do you think is the oldest word in English language? Yeah, Maybe we learn. learn. Oh, okay, that's a good, a good chance. Yeah, it's not that one, but that is a very old as well. Okay, I will tell you first. The oldest word in English language is "I." Like "I am," that is the oldest. The English. I don't know. You have ever had the chance to read things, like, for example, from Shakespeare or some old books and you will see that there are many, many words that are different. So for example, uh, in German for, for you to say to, you say do. And in old English, uh, you say also do, that is T-H-O-U, do. Because the root of the word is kind of the same. Uh, but there are some words that from the very beginning of the language, a long time ago, they're kept the same. So for example, I, is the oldest word in English. Okay, and uh, this, is a, this is going to be very easy. Do you think, uh, do you know what will be the, the shortest, the shortest word in English? The same, I? Exactly, it's the same, is I. That is a word, right? Because it's a subject. It, only that word is saying something. So, and that is, 
not only the oldest, but also the shortest. And uh, here is another question. Uh, what is the shortest grammatically correct sentence in English? I am. I'm sorry? I am. I am. That is the shortest grammatically correct sentence in English. I am. You can say that, and that is a sentence, a whole sentence, only two words. So you might hold interest in that one. I mean, that is just a sentence with two words, and I is actually a word, right? Very good. Uh, what else can I tell you about English? Okay. Uh, this is something very good that I, I, I found. So due to the varying meanings of the word buffalo, and the fact that Buffalo is the name of a city in the US, is a state of New York. The sentence Buffalo, 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 Buffalo is grammatically correct. In my mind, that is, I mean, grammatically correct. Because one it says about the animal, the other is about the state, the other one is about the city, the other one is about a street, and, and so goes on. So you can say that one. So it's going to how be... Many, uh, how, how many buffalos? Ah, okay, uh, let me check. Eight. Eight words, yeah. In my end, that one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy. That is crazy. I mean, and, and it's not only crazy because, I mean, when you hear that one, you might think, it doesn't make any sense, but not also, uh, not only have sense, but also is grammatically correct because sometimes we can create sentences that are not correct, right? Uh, but that is, I mean, that is a, a valid sentence. So that is a very interesting thing, right? Okay, let me just check some other things here. Okay. Um, the non word uh, gothy can be pronounced as fish with the GH from words such as tough. For example, that, that is like the sound tough, right? Or the O from words such as women. So that also happens that the sounds in English change. That is because, uh, well, in England, long, long time ago, uh, what happened is that uh, there were many, many words and some other people from other countries, they also uh, reign in England and they were able to, to bring their words for that one. So um, I have a question for you then. Uh, where does English originate? Uh, wh where, what is the origin? What is the place or the places where it comes English? Do you know that? By any chance? I heard something about Vikings mixing with other language. Okay, very good. Yeah, as I was telling you, there are many words. A lot of invasions happen. A lot, I mean, in a lot of territories, and that causes to happen. So, for you to know, uh, English originates from Northwest Germany and the Netherlands. The language started from, I mean, from Dutch and from Dutch, that is not the same. And uh, whenever they moved to other regions, they started to change that one. So English has its origin in all high German, all Norse and Anglo-Norman. And the modern English started being used in the 14th century. And the closest languages to English are Dutch and West Flemish. That's why some words in German, for example, or in Dutch, that is from the Netherlands, some words are sometimes very similar. The writing sometimes is different, but the pronunciation sometimes is, is very similar. So if you learn, if you learn English and you finish that one, and you want to learn something that is kind of not that difficult, Dutch might be a very good option. And Swedish also. Swedish, the roots on that one is going to be kind of not that difficult. You can see some, some symbols there and some 
uh, words that are kind of strange, but actually, if you learn English, if you know how to speak English, it's not going to be that difficult. In mind that one. So it's the same that happens for Spanish. If you know Spanish, what do you think are the languages that are easier to learn? Portuguese, maybe. Portuguese, definitely. That is. I'm sorry. Italian. Italian, Italiano? definitely. So actually, those are the two languages that are very, very easy to learn: Portuguese and Italian. Maybe, maybe Italian is. Uh, is easier because, I mean, there are words that are exactly the same. There are some differences, for example, when you, the article, el, la, sometimes is different. For example, for you to say el tigre, in English to say la tigre, so that's kind of strange. But, I mean, if you see, it, you just need to learn some rules, and the most of the things are going to be very, very easy. So that is very interesting. So whenever you uh, wonder where was English originated, Northwest Germany and the Netherlands, that will be it. Okay, let's make a little game. Let's see. How many people do you believe that speak English around the world? Let's see who gets closer to that number. About 600,000 people. 600,000 people, okay. No, 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 uh, sorry. 600 million people. 600 million people, okay, See. very good. As a, as, a, um, a native, as a native or, for example, counting us? In general, for example, we are included in that one because we okay, speak English. Okay. So in, in general, and we have the first guess that it was from David, 600 million people. So who wants to guess a okay. different number? If our population, it's about, I think, eight, 8 billion, if I'm not mistaken. It could be the... How to say these dos terceras partes, maybe? Two thirds of that one. Yeah. So seven billion is going to be Around, like two billions. No, two, two thirds. Uh, two thirds. So it's going to be like. Like five and. Yeah, between and four and five billion, you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Maybe. So we have 600 million and let's say five billion people. So that is a big difference. Let's see who gets closer. Uh -huh. Two billion. Two billion people. Two billion people. All right, very good. We have three guesses. Who else is wants to, to share that? Nobody else is wants to share or to guess. All right, so if nobody launches yourself, you, I'm going to give you the answer. This is something that I found, and it's a number for the end of 2021. So according to that statistics, it was 952 million people, okay? So it's a lot, uh, but remember that I mean Chinese, there are a lot of people, right? And they, not all, not all of them speak English, just a minority. Uh, here in El Salvador, I guess, I mean, even when there are a lot of classes of English, uh, the most of the people, they retire in basic or in intermediate. So they are not part of this number. You, since you are in advance and you are able to have a conversation in English, yes, you are part of this number. So let's go for another guess. How many people speak English as a first language? Yes. I, I go back to my, my number, six. All right. 600 million. 600 million. Interesting. Very good. Any other guess from the rest of the class? You know that already, uh, you know already that it's going to be 952 million people around the world. Let's say around, uh, just as around the world, but as a native speaker, 
as a first language. What do you think? A fear of the of the people that speak English. Okay, so a third, if you say that is 952 million, it's going to be around nine, like 350 million people, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, let's, let's keep that number for you, 350 million people. Who else wants to guess? Nobody else's? Okay, so actually the number is 339 million people. So the winner here, yes, definitely is Marvin. Good, that is nice. <laughs> so that means that around 600 million people speak English as a second language, okay? So another question for you. Um, in how many countries is English the official language? What do you think? Twenty-two. Mm, I'm sorry. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Twenty-two countries. Okay, we have one guess. Any other? Thirty-five. 25? No, 30, 35. Uh, 35, okay. We have 22, we have 35. What else? I see about 15. 15 countries. All right. We have three guesses. Anybody else wants to share their number? All right, so yeah, the answer for that one is 67 countries. So the 35, again, Marvin, uh, you are the closest to that one. Very good. Two extra points for the exam. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if we were make an exam, you know, sometimes I do that one when we actually do some tests, but since that is on the platform, uh, it's not possible for me. But if you need help with two questions, I uh, will give you the answer, <laughs> all right? Okay. We can do that one. <laughs> okay, so um, most English grammar and spelling follow standardized rules, so standards for everybody. Uh, there is something that is called the Dr. Johnson Dictionary, and that sets out the rules of English grammar and spelling. So, and that was made in 1755. This dictionary was the first to comprehensively document the English lexicon and is one of the most famous dictionary in history taking over eight years to compile. So in mind to create this dictionary that is one of the most complete dictionary that took eight years. That is a lot of work, okay? So maybe the next question for that I have for you is, do you have an English only dictionary? Yes. Only, yes. only an app, sorry, continue. Go ahead. Now my comment is I have, but only an app. Ah, okay, the application is good now because you go and look for that one. But if you sound in English, that is fine. Uh, what about you, David? Yes, we have in, in school because uh, English is a second language and all of the guys and, and the, many of the teachers have a Shimbi dictionary. Okay, very good. So that is a very good recommendation for you. Whenever you have questions about a word, don't translate it. That is, uh, for advance, it's not going to be a good idea. You need to go to the dictionary and check uh, the way that the word works. 
that is going to be very good. You are going to find lots of interesting things. If you are able to see the dictionaries that are only in English, even though the Spanish, you will see that sometimes there are some charts, recommendations, uh, the way that you do this and this other thing. Uh, that is it. And the bigger the dictionary, the better, right? Because it's going to have, sometimes it has a synonym, antonym, examples of the word. So that is a very good thing. And of course, the phonetics, the way that you pronounce that one. So please, if you don't have a dictionary, an English dictionary, only English, try to. And uh, Marvin is doing something very interesting because he has an application. You can download that one. You don't need to buy because those are very expensive. I mean, I have mine and that cost me uh, $125. That is too much, but I'm very happy looking for words there. Um, but in an application, I mean, as long as you have internet, you will be able to. Good. Okay, I have something else for you. Um, question, what do you think is the most used adjective in English? Adjective. Well. Well, okay. Maybe big. Big, okay. Well and big we have by now. Anybody else wants to guess? Good. I'm sorry? Good. Good, okay. Anybody else wants to, to give it a shot? Okay. Well, actually the answer, Marvin, you are on fire, is good. Good, that's <laughs> the one. Fire, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're ready to go to the U.S. <laughs> I went so, to the U.S. Yep. I'm sorry. I went to the U.S. Uh, you went already? Months ago. Yeah. Oh my goodness, tell us about the experience. How was the English part there? Uh, yeah, it, well, it was an interesting experience because I went to, I went to, to know some, some places, but about the experience in the language was, um, well, I, thanks to English Corporativo, I, I, <laughs> I I want to express my my grateful because I was able to understand some conversation, not all the words, but the the the, the context. But maybe the 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 most thing that I I notice is native speaker speak low. So <laughs> I heard many people and they speak very low. So I don't know why, but and they understand. <laughs> and in my case, I need to people speak um, low for, for understand some words. So maybe that was my, that the thing that I found amazing or I found, I don't know, lo que más me sorprendió. Okay, very good. And uh, well, uh, low. where did you go, may I ask? I went to Miami. All right, Miami. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, Latin American countries, we speak very loud. That is so true. Yeah. Uh, depending on where you are in the U.S., probably it's going to be one way or the other. Um, but yeah, I mean, they speak with a close, very, uh, with a mouth very close. And that makes it sometimes difficult to understand because they, they're speaking it's like, I don't know, uh, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing is, uh, go ahead. And, and the most of people speak like this. The most of people native because uh, in, in, this, in this city, uh, there are many Latin, Latin people. And the most of the people speak English. But Latin, Latin, Latin speaker? Huh? Letting a speaker is a bit more clear, uh, at least for me. <laughs> Maybe yeah, because you know, huh? oh, go ahead. if not, they 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 native language. Yeah, that is true. I mean, uh, I mean, Latin we speak very loud. 
almost in every country. And uh, when we speak, uh, sometimes it's very understandable because since we have the same root, that is the Spanish, the pronunciation sometimes is linked to that. But you are right, the, the native speakers uh, in English, they speak with a, with a mouth very close. I don't know why it's that. Yeah. Uh, but that is the way it's mostly in the US, in Canada also that happens. Um, in Australia, more or less, yeah. But depending on so many things, yeah, that that happened. Yeah, but in conclusion, I was happy because I was able to to communicate. That is very good. I mean, yeah, the best actually the best way for you to learn English is that if you go to a native speaker speaking a country, definitely you are going to learn. Um, the more that you stay there, the better that your English is going to become. But um, uh, to go there and to, to understand and uh, if you are able to communicate, to speak, and then they understand you, I mean, that means that you are on the right path, definitely. Good, good. Let's, uh, since we were speaking about good and, for example, well, uh, remember that well is an adverb and good is an adjective. So another question that I have for you is, uh, what is the difference? I mean, what does an adverb does and what does an adjective does? What is the difference between an adjective and adverb? Do you remember? An adjective teacher is modifying a noun, giving some quality or characteristics of a noun. And an adverb is maybe modifying a verb. I think there is the mind, the mind difference. Very good. Actually, very good. That is a very good example on that one. So, yeah, an adjective is going to uh, describe a noun. And an adverb, it can describe either a verb or another adverb. So that will be it. And very good. I mean, very is an adverb and describing good. That is an adjective. So that happens. That happens. Okay, what is, question for everybody, what do you believe is the most common noun in English? Young. Young. Okay. John, we have Tompa here. Anybody else's? I hear in the, in the movies, Bob. <laughs> Bob. Okay. <laughs> it's something like, like the little name for Robert, something like that. But the bow is. Uh... Yeah, that is the short of, of Robert. Yeah, that's yeah, so, Bob, so, so. Bobby. Okay, Bob. And, and there, there is another that is not John, but Joe. Joe. Okay, might be, very good. Okay, anybody else wants to give it a shot? Maybe John, 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 maybe John, as John Doe, for example. Uh, John. John. Okay, just uh -huh. remember that noun, a noun can be not only a name of a person, but also chair or something like that. So noun is in general. But John oh. actually is a very common name in English, definitely. So what is the most common noun in English? Any other person wants to share? Okay, I'm gonna give you the answer for that one is going to be time. The most common noun in English is time. So time is a word that they repeat a lot. Every time, each time, this time. So time, that will be it. Another question, what is the most mispronounced word in English? What do you think is that? Anybody wants to give it a shot? Nobody. Mispronounced. Something that people don't say well. Even native? Native, I'm sorry, that's the word? No, no, even native people 
mispronounce that word that you're asking for? Uh, yes, it's a word that, I mean, it's the most mispronounced word in the world in English. What do you think is that one? I have no idea. All right. Okay, this is a very funny one. The most mispronounced and often misspelled word in English is pronunciation. The you word pronunciation. The, the word, word is <laughs> pronunciation. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the T my, sound sometimes is a problem for people, right? Pronunciation, my, some people they say, huh? My option was Schwarzenegger. Oh man, <laughs> actually that last name is from Sweden, no, for Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, it's difficult. I don't know, Schwarzenegger, you know? Yeah, I remember something very funny that sometimes happened. I, I really, in the morning, every morning I read the newspaper and I try to read two or three newspapers so I can compare, right? I, I get some things. And one of the newspapers I, I, I almost always read is El Blog. And then I, I saw the piece of news Arnold Schwarzenegger was caught with drug and he's in jail. And I said, my goodness, what happened? And I click on that one. And when that I opened that one, it was a, a person in Honduras that his father named him Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, <laughs> I was like, my goodness. <laughs> that was crazy. Now, and now I remember that one and it's funny. But yeah, the most mispronounced word is pronunciation because of the T sound in here one. Some people say in pronunciation and that is not good, of course. Okay, let's check some other things. Okay, uh, this is something interesting that I found. So uh, English is the language of the sky. So all pilots, all pilots must identify themselves in English during international flights. Likewise, all air traffic controllers at international airports must be able to communicate with the pilots in English. So if you are a pilot, yes, you need to uh, know how to speak in English, even if you don't go to the US or Canada or any other countries, you need to be able to at least identify yourself in English. In mind that. So what other professions do you believe uh, that are necessary to learn English. It doesn't matter where you are. What other professions you need to know a little bit of English at least. Maybe ship think? captains. Which one? Ship captains or, or all the like like, like planes, uh, the ships. Yeah. Uh, like the crew from the the plane. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, but from the ships. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, the vessels. Yeah. yeah. In a in a maritime, eh, 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 how to say this? Eh, como en el ámbito marítimo, yeah. In the maritime area, maybe. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, you are right. I mean, yes, definitely. If you are going to go there, you are able. You you need to, you need to do something. Have you ever seen this movie, Captain Phillips? Yes, yes, it's a good movie. It's a very good movie. And then you realize there that, that nowadays, I mean, in the actual world, we still have some pirates, right? So they exist. And they are not the way that we think, but they exist, there are pirates. That is very common in those kind of coasts that in, uh, near Africa and uh, countries like that one, a lot of pirates. I didn't know that that, that was a reality and when I saw the movie I researched and yeah they say that it's a very common thing happening there very very kind of crazy right? I don't know good what other profession do you believe that you really need to have English knowledge besides the ships the crew of the ship and uh, the uh, pilots Maybe pro programmers. I don't know. 
But I, I think that the most majority of language are English like a base. You are so right. Uh, programmers, they need to know. I mean, the code is always in English and you need to, you need to know certain things in English. And of course, little by little you are learning, right? But you need to, very good programmers. You need to read the solution <laughs> in Google. Yeah, that, that is something that happens. I mean, whenever, whenever I'm looking for, for a solution about a problem, for example, today I had a problem that I am far away from home. I was not able to return to my home and I only had my cell phone. And in the past, I knew that Zoom does not record calls uh, or video calls in, in Android. So I need to research. I was reading and I always read that in English because in English we have the most updated information, right? Yeah, At the many, end, I many was... document. Sorry, teacher. Many, many documentation. A lot, a lot. So yeah, and the most recent as well, right? So uh, I had to research in, in in English, and I was able to find the configuration, how to change some things on the cell phone, and then on the app, and then on the meeting. So I'm able to record the meeting here, but. Uh, anyways, just in case, also, I'm recording that one in a different computer far away from here. So uh, just in case, you know, I, I don't like to, to give it a chance to the destiny to, to mess with me. So uh, that, that is something. I mean, whenever you are looking for a solution in English, English is going to be there for you. Okay. How many letters? This is another question. How many letters? do you think has the longest word in English? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. That's from the movie, right? <laughs> yes. I don't know about 26. 26 letters, okay. We have some, some numbers by now, 26. Anybody else wants to? Give it a shot. Maybe 40 letters. 40 letters, okay, very good. 26 and 40, who else wants to participate? 33. 33, okay, you are in between. Let's see how it goes. Anybody else wants to give it a shot? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer after these commercials. Ah, uh, that is not true. So it's going to be 45 letters. Imagine, the longest word in the English language contains 45 letters. And the word, let me see if I can tell you the word, is pneumonultram microscopic silicon volcanic covenus. I'm going to send that word to the chat later on so you can check. <laughs> okay. It. I guess that if I spell it right now, I mean, maybe it's not going to be good. But I mean, and that refers to a lung disease caused by inhalation of fine silica dust. So that is the second one. And I mean, the, the first one, the second one is Hippopotamus q quildilius fovia, that ironically means the fear of long words. <laughs> how, how many letters have the second? Oh my goodness, I had in, I didn't count that one to be honest <laughs> with you. I guess it's less than 45, but I'm not able to count. Let me see one, two, three, four, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thirty-seven. That is a very long one, and it's very funny because I mean that long word is. Uh, I'm afraid of long words. So if you, if somebody asks you, what is your phobia? I mean, <laughs> you need to say that word. That is crazy. You have yeah. to say the phobia. <laughs> yeah, you have to say <laughs> the, that whole name of the phobia. That is, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I, I'm going to send you the two words. On the on the chat, so you can check into that one. 
I, I have a dog. Uh -huh. uh, I, I always wonder how native speaker uh, do or write something word that if that learn that that write words or or when the words have you no know, letters between other letters like T or D or you know the English. So how 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 they do it for uh, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, they they try to get sure. I mean, for example, one of the things that, I mean, if I ask you, if I, if I tell you something, a word that you don't know and it's kind of long or, or, or strange, most commonly is going to ask to spell, how do you spell that one? What is that? And they're very curious about that. And I never knew that word. I mean, there are many words that they use or that exist that sometimes they don't know. For example, phlegmatic, right? Phlegmatic. That means that you are calm down and you are relaxed, but you don't say relaxed. You say you are phlegmatic today. Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, if somebody listens to that word that is kind of strange, most likely they are going to ask that to be spelled, to be spelled out. So, yeah, it's kind of that happens. I, I truly I don't know. I didn't look. I was going to look for that one. What is the longest word in Spanish? Do, I mean, maybe somebody can look for that one. What is anybody can look for? What is the longest word in Spanish? Yeah. So we can learn something about that as well. I heard that word, but I don't remember. <laughs> it's about oh, yeah, it, electroencephalographista. Ah, okay, that is a long one. Yeah. Yeah. That 20, a, 23 letters. In mine, 23 letters. And the good thing is that since we know Spanish, whenever you say that word, we know what is that about, right? That is very good. But if I say the other two words that I have here, I mean, I say the word and maybe in English, everybody's going to say, what is that thing, right? So that's crazy, okay? All right, uh, let me just move on to that one. Okay. And I uh, have hi, one comment. Okay. And you know, if in, in other language like Polish, for example, is similar to English to they use a spell often because <laughs> Polish, for example, or or that or mm, no Dutch or Hollander, what is Dutch, yeah. Dutch, Dutch, yeah. Yeah, they have words with I don't know, stone leather that I think that it has no some. Yeah, oh, that is true. Yeah, so maybe they use the spell often, like English. Yeah, definitely. I mean, whenever you, it doesn't matter the language where you are, whenever you uh, hear a word that is kind of strange, difficult, most likely uh, people are going to say, how do you spell that one? Oh, what is that about? Can you please tell me what that, what that word is? And they are going to tell you. Uh, that will be it. Okay, uh, actually, I have another question for you. I'm thinking about that one. Um, how do you say volado in English? There is a word for that one in English. I mean, stuff, maybe. The stuff. Ah, yeah, that is a good way. I mean, people say the stuff. Give me that stuff. Or, what, what is the stuff? When you don't know. Huh? What is the thing, maybe? That thing, yeah. But there is another word that is exactly like volado. You know, in Spanish, we say, cansado volado. So, uh, in, in English, they say also, could you please give me the that word? By any chance, do you know what is that? Shunshe, they say Wendy. Shunshe, it tells oh, Wendy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, actually, the word is Wuchamakali. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you, how do you, you spell it? Uh, yeah, it's, I'm going to send you that as well whenever we have the chat available. So, because right now I cannot chat here in this part. So, uh, but in the in the chat from WhatsApp, I'm going to send you the three words. And yeah, that is wuchamakalit, wuchamakalit. But that actually is the sound of the word, what you may call it, what you may call it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. So, but they say wuchamakalit. Yeah, give me the wuchamakalit. So that is it. Whatever the name is, no, give me that part. So, the problem here in, in, in Spanish is that sometimes 
o grand mothers, they say, alcanzar el volado que está encima del volado a la parte del volado rojo. So it's like, what? Right? So <laughs> that is crazy, right? Good. Uh, who was, this is another question for you. Who was the author, uh, the writer that had the biggest, one of the biggest influence in the English language? What do you think? Shakespeare. 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 That is William Shakespeare. No? He's like William Cervantes to Spanish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, William Shakespeare had a great influence on the whole language. I mean, he was a poet, a playwright, an actor, and he introduced thousands of words and phrases into the English language. I mean, it, it was the time that the English was consolidating and the words were not the full established. Then they, the, his rating was giving the, the context of the language. Very true. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, okay, what is the most common phrase from William uh, Shakespeare? What do you know? I know to be or know. not to be. Exactly. Very good. That is to be or not to be. So that is a phrase that he introduced into the English and now is very common. But there were many, many phrases that he introduced and made the language robust, right? So uh, that, that happens. Sometimes one person... Uh, goes into that one. I have another question for you. And now I'm thinking about things, you know. Uh, so you say William Shakespeare. Do you know which who, uh, which comedian, Mexican comedian was named after William Shakespeare? Shakespeare. 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 So they yes. say that he was Shakespeare, like a little Shakespeare, right? <laughs> that that was very really interesting. Yeah. In my I heard about Shakespeare. He invented some words because they need some word for for the line, and they don't. And he don't. He doesn't have a word, so he invented. Very true. So yeah, he introduced. He created some words because he wanted to explain something or describe something, and was not possible. So at the end, he had to invent some things. Good. Very good. All right. So uh, nowadays in this new era, uh, you know that we are inventing a lot of words, right? So some uh, English words are formed by combining two words. So for example, we have hungry. So some people, they use that one. And actually you can find that in the dictionary as the combination of hungry and angry, hungry. So I'm hungry, not hungry, but hungry in my end. I'm hungry and I need food. Ah, that's crazy. So what other words you know like that? What can you think of? Well, there are words like uh, this in using in, compor in computer, like a binary digit that you say bit. This okay. combining two words. That is a good one, yeah, very nice. Any other word that you have heard? Or not only that are compound by two words, but words, new words that are invented or that we use that in the past was not used. For example, Bluetooth, right? Bluetooth, you know, what is that? How to use it? But we didn't use that long time ago. And that was for sure. Wait, so... I'm sorry? Tweet from Twitter, from Twitter. Yeah, a tweet, send a tweet from the Twitter. That is, that is something very common, very good. Any other? Sten. I'm sorry, which one is it? Sten. Sten. Sten, Sten, S-T-A-N, like Eminem uh, song. All right, that is true, very good, very good. Any other that you might think of? Okay, that's good. Hey, we are learning lots of things today. So a question for everybody. What is the most common letter 
in English. What do you think is it? A. A. Okay. We have Maybe again. letter letter E. E. O sea, e. e. Uh -huh. Okay. So A E. Any other that you might think? I agree with E. E. Okay. Okay, actually you are very right. The most common letter in English is E. Very good. And what will be the, the most common consonant? T. B? T. No. Uh, T. T as in Tom. Okay. A T, we have T. Anybody else wants to guess? T. T as well. Okay, T as in Tom. Okay, actually, uh, the answer for that one is R. The most common consonant in English is R. And after that one is T. Yeah, T is very common, right? So, and it's in a lot of words, okay? And also uh, remember that every syllable in English must have a vowel sound, okay? Doesn't mean that you are not going to have words with only consonants, but the sound exists. For example, sky, you don't have any, any vowel there, but the sound of the vowel is there, like an I, sky, right? Okay. Um, we're not gonna check into that one. Let me just check. Okay, another question. What word, what letter is the most common at the beginning of the words in English? Word is not mother consonant or power. Ah, uh, yeah, which, uh, yeah, which letter is the most common? at the beginning of the words in English. Any less? S. 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 Okay. What other people think about this? E. Uh, I'm sorry, E? E, yes. E, okay. Okay. Any other? What letter at the beginning of words is the most common? Okay, actually that was letter S. That is the most common at the beginning of a word. A Mayan. Yeah, we have a very good competition between Marvin and David. Ha ha, nice. Let's see who's the winner of the car. I'm going to send you a Hot Wheels car. <laughs> Not a real car. <laughs> the gift okay, car. Uh, yeah, I mean, mind that I say, you are going to earn a brand new car. I mean, and that is true, right? <laughs> I can send you a hot wheel car and that is true. <laughs> okay. Let me just check some other things. Okay, what is, let's see if you can get that one. What is the word, the longest word that does not have the letter, a letter more than once. It doesn't repeat letters. In Spanish, it's murciélago. <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> you have one for Spanish, nice. <laughs> but in English, it's very short, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, that is, that is definitely not. Okay, that word is uncopyrightable. That is the word that is the longest and we don't repeat any letter into that one. Uncopyrightable. In my... Uh, what is the name? Another question. What is the name for a sentence that contains all the 26 letters of the alphabet? There is a name for that kind of sentences. By any chance, do you know the, the name of those sentences? The 
as I remember some some time I hear something like that. Okay. Okay. So the name for a sentence that contains all 26 letters of the alphabet is called a pangram. Pangram. A pangram. Yeah. That would be the name for that one. And there exists something. So for example, this sentence has all the 26 letters. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That is a pangram. Okay, it has all the 26 letters of the alphabet, of course, in English. There is no any here, right? So um, all the 26 letters on that one. Am I? The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So there is a pangram. Interesting. Okay, this is an easy one, uh, kind of easy. Uh, what is the only word in English that ends with the letters M T? M T. M. <laughs> what what might be that one? Can you repeat, teacher, please? Yeah. What is the only word in English that ends with the letters M T? Eminent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Empty. M movement? No. Movement. No. Movement no. is N empty. Uh -huh. no. TNT. PN MT. That, those are the letters. M as in mother and T as in Tom. Okay. I will tell you that one, that is dreamt. So that is it. Sometimes we uh, use that word uh, and the pronunciation is, is the same dreamt as ED at the, at the end. But I mean, in uh, English from uh, the UK, it has to be dreamt MT. So that is the only word in the world of English that has MT at the end of the word. My. Okay, this is an easy one because it's the same for English and Spanish. What is the, okay, how can I ask you this? Where comes the alphabet word from? And what is the origin for of that Greek. word? The letter is for Greek, the first letter alpha and the second letter beta. Very good, alpha, beta, right? So yeah, the Greeks, they were amazing at that time, but they, they made a lot of things. That was very good, perfect. Another question. We are learning lots of things that are kind of different. What is the name of the dot over the letter I and the letter J? The name? Yeah, what is the name in of English. the dot? On the top in English, yeah. On the For top I. of the letter I and J. On the top letter I? Ah, okay, I and J, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know that the name of the, the top of the Ñ, Virgulia. Ah, okay, is... <laughs> that's good, nice. But nice. that name, uh, I, did, I don't know. Okay, the name of that one is superscript dot. Oh, see, it makes sense, superscript yeah. dot, yeah. Superscript dot. That is the name of that little one that is on the top of the I's and the J's. Lots of information, right? Yes. Uh, you know this one. So, for example, there are some words that exist only in plural. I mean, it makes sense only in plural. Uh, for example, glasses, right? When you are going to wear your glasses, that is just a plural one, right? Uh, binoculars. Beans? Beans, okay. Jeans, jeans, like the like, jeans. like the blue jeans. Uh, definitely, that is something. Yeah, I, I remember when I was a kid that people used to say, uh, "Give me those black jeans, black blue jeans." Right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? 
Yeah. I want a black I, I, I had a friend that uh, tell me that he they, he had a green jean, a green blue jean, blue jean, and I I told I told him I, I don't believe you. But I, I have a, a green blue jean. Okay. Okay, if you say so, right? I mean, I don't want to argue with you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, before, I mean, long time ago, when people they didn't know a lot, a little bit of English, let's say, they were very common mistakes, right? Very common, mistakes, like that one, the black blue jean, the green blue yes, jean. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I believe that that is not that common anymore. But yeah, might be that some people they use that one. So what other words are? Only in plural. We have jeans, we have binoculars, we have glasses. Pants. Pants, definitely. Pants is plural only. Okay. Pajamas, right? The PJs. That is also only in English. Tongues, shirts. Gallows is another one. All right. Interesting, right? Uh, and yes, speaking about the the errors, right? I remember, I remember a long time ago, also when the dollar uh, was coming to El Salvador, right? That everybody was, they were saying, oh, the dollars, everybody was saying about Coras, right? I want to see the Coras. Yes. Coras. <laughs> and I was thinking, Coras, what is that? I mean, I was lost. And then when I saw the coins, well, you realize that it's quarters, right? Uh, I mean, and people, they say quarters. And I mean, everybody, we use that one. Even if you know English, we use that one, okay? That is, that is very funny. Uh, what else? Let me check. I, I, I heard a story about uh, a guy that uh, went to USA many, many years ago. There are no spending machines here, only, only there. And somebody in USA, uh, he, they went to a machine, a machine for a Coke and put uh, two, two quarters and select a Coca-Cola, okay. Two years uh, later, he went with another friend and uh, he said, there are uh, very good machines here that uh, you put the coins and the machine gives you the, the soda. And they went, uh, but uh, at this time, the Coca-Cola was uh, uh, 10 cents more. And he put uh, two, two quarters and the machine put a message, dime. And he uh, says to the machine, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that might happen. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's a dime, right? It's 10 cents. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that happens. Sometimes we relate the words in, in, in different ways. I mean, that happens. So quarters, I mean, I, I mean, I, I when I go to the store, I say, so I know that it's quarter, but I cannot say that one. I mean, they understand in a different way. <laughs> okay, here, Cora is, is the official name for, for that coin. In uh -huh. That is true. I mean, you cannot say that one. I mean, you know, sometimes we are at work and we're speaking in English and, and then we say Cora, right? So that is that is normal. That is just the name. <laughs> and that happens, I mean, in many words. For example, that word that is very popular here, el water, right? It comes from water, I mean, because that liquor is transparent and it's like water. So uh, that happens a lot. Pipir is nice. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry? Pipir is nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is also very funny. <laughs> but but uh, this is... a. Uh... This is a uh, English origin. You see what they they, they is here. People is nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, and that is people is nice. They're like like the name of the dog. 
the dog in the in the, in the past uh, they to enter the USA they only asked that the the, the dog was free of flies free of flies free of flies and and the Mexican hair free of life free of life free of life say. exactly yes yeah imagine imagine how the language changes right I mean yeah. yes yeah because in the past they they ask right I mean I guess they still do it. Uh, is the dog free of lice? So it's free of lice, right? So <laughs> that is a very common one. Yeah. And there are many interesting stories about how things change, how people, I mean, make different sometimes the language. That is a very funny thing. <laughs> okay, another question for the ones that want to learn and participate. The longest English word without a vowel. What might be that one? Okay, I uh, will tell you that one. So the longest English word without a true vowel is a rhythm. With Y, of course, rhythm, rhythm and blues. Uh -huh. That's the one. Rhythm, oh, okay. Okay, this is something that uh, I believe that David knows, or maybe some other people also. Uh, what is the only planet not named after a god? The only planet. After what? Is... After a god. Like yes, uh, Neptune, yeah. Mercury. Ne Mercury is, is has a, a god. Uh -huh. So which one is the only one uh, that is not Earth. named? I'm sorry? Earth. Very good. That is the answer. The Earth. Because but we have the other ones. Uh -huh. The Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Uranus, that is very funny in English. Neptune, okay, Pluto. And the only one is different is the Earth. Nice. Very good, very good. Okay. Uh, this is not that English, but it's interesting. So uh, you know that the name of the keyboard in the cell phone is Query. Why is the name Query? Because... Uh... The, uh, the the keyboard has Q W E R T Y, and they are in a in a row. Yeah, there are one after another in the same row. Very good. That is the answer. I mean, when you open your uh, keyboard on the cell phone, uh, on the top left uh, on the first line, you are going to find those exactly words uh, letters. I'm sorry, uh, Q W E R T uh, N Y. So they name it the query keyboard. That is very interesting. I, I remember that I read uh, why the, invent, the inventor, I mean, that was invented not on the cell phone, but on the writing machines, right? Uh, he put that not in alphabetical order because of the vowels. He wanted him to, to have like strategical things. And I mean, it was very interesting the way that he did it. And he did it that way. I mean, some people ask why not in alphabetical, right? I remember that I saw a, a video, like a commentary or something like this, that if you put in alphabetical order, uh, obviously in English, I think, uh, and you begin to write or to type yeah, in your keyboard, some uh, we are talking like rudimentary machines, yeah. Uh, the 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 parts that uh, paint the letter on the paper get uh, stuck one with another one, yeah. So the the best way in order to avoid these things is the query. Um, Accommodation, maybe, if I can say just like this. And there is another uh, accommodation of letters that I don't remember, but it's kind of different from this uh, 
uh, settings. Yeah, like the query is another one, but but I don't remember the name. But it was for that because if you type a so quick, yeah, or, or very fast, uh, the 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 pieces, yeah, that paint the letter on the paper get stuck. Okay. Yeah, that is it. I mean, it was very interesting the way that they made that one. And yeah, that was a part of the invention of the writing machine. I mean, that was a long time ago, right? And uh, yeah, because of the, whenever you click on one, it goes up, right? And, and, and print the letter. So now, uh, I mean, it's the same, but it's in a little way. Very interesting, sorry. Okay, um, this is kind of strange, the one that I found, it was kind of strange. Um, it says the following sentence contain seven identical words in a row and still makes sense. So it is true for all that, 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 that refers, that is not the same, that, 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 that refers to. <laughs> so that is equal to, it is true for all that, 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 which that that refers that is not the same that which that that refers to. Did you understand what I said? <laughs> I mean, that is a crazy sentence. Uh, sometimes, you know, the teachers uh, of English, they're in uh, basic grades. Sometimes they teach that kind of thing so they can understand that uh, even though some sentences are not that it doesn't look like it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. So that is actually makes sense, but it's, it doesn't say something very specific, right? So, but it's, it's something like that. Okay, very good. I, I, I saw in, in social media one picture some days ago that say before was, 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 was where? Yes, I mean, and that happens. I don't know. Sometimes there are sentences that you say, this is not correct, right? Or it doesn't make sense. I don't understand what it says, but it does. I, I didn't understand until I read the comments <laughs> because before the use was for was, they use it where. Exactly. So, and that is it. sometimes some grammar, some rules that, I, I for specific things that are not that very common, sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes um, it, it shows you and it, uh, it tells you things, right? But it's very interesting. Good. All right, my friends, uh, that was the information that I had today for English, that is in general. Would you like to share something interesting that you learned in English? I mean, something crazy or some things that you didn't know? I had a comment about the, the news you you saw on the blog. Oh, a blog. <laughs> now I saw something some similar because some days I, on TikTok, I guess I saw a video that one company that sells cereal, I guess. I, I don't remember the, the product, but they use a name of a famous person like Jordan. It's that cereal and they say the name of the cereal but after showing this the people not the, the hams or the people or the person eat the cereals and they say the name jordan or schumacher or clinton something like that after that they show the, the idea of the of the person but it's other person that name michael jordan but it's not the, the jordan that we think Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I believe I believe that they made they made that on purpose, right? So when you read the head of the news, you are like, oh my goodness, what happened, right? So something's going on, and then you open the news and it's like, oh my goodness, this is not what I, I thought, and you laugh, of course, but that that happens, yeah. Very good. Uh, any uh, any other thing that you have learned that are that you find interesting whenever you are reading English or something about the English language that you found kind of interesting?
Okay. I have one comment more. <laughs> okay, go ahead, definitely. I I really like reading and uh, books in Spanish is more expensive than in English. Uh, be because uh, the number of pages more in, in Spanish. And but the the original language is English, so it's better read in English and is um uh, cheaper than Spanish. So I need to I need to learn uh, to read uh whatever. Okay. Very good. So yes, yes, that is that is true. It's, it's not uh, that cheap, but yeah, that is a very good thing. I mean, I remember that yeah, you told us before that you were reading some books. Uh, it was a very good thing. We were speaking about your favorite books. Uh, it was it was very nice. Actually, yeah, my one of my favorite books. I have a lot. Uh, is uh, the petite uh, the the little prince. You know, the petite prince. That is one of my favorites. A very good book. Okay. So we're going to do free practice for the last minute. So let me check how much, yeah, we have time for a few people there. So um, now I'm gonna choose, let's see how it goes. Dora Elizabeth. Okay, teacher. Hello, how are you? Hi, teacher. A little tired. Mm -hmm. Tired, right? Yeah, it's Thursday and I know uh, mm -hmm. it's, is difficult, but yeah, tomorrow is Friday and that's it. So, um, okay, uh, tell me, uh, how do you describe yourself? Um, I have a hard worker. I have, I am a, a Pacific person and I, I uh, I like uh, I think uh, I I am a, a nice person in general. Mm. Oh, definitely, I totally agree on that one. So, okay, you say that you were a pacific person. Uh, you never had a fight in your life. Yes, <laughs> in, when when was a teenager. <laughs> really. <laughs> but it was a fight, I mean, a verbal fight, or actually you fought with somebody? No, fought, no. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Just by words? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you see yourself in the next five years? Uh, in five years, I think I will retire. And I, I like to live in a slight country, a little house, but with internet, water, electric, or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that a, sounds like fun. A, a big garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so imagine that if you live in an island by yourself with all the internet connection and everything, you will be ha happy about that one. No. No. <laughs> connection. <laughs> with ah, that. Okay. Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Okay, what do you usually do to practice English in general when you are not in class? And I practice English, uh, listen to the shows to be uh, like uh, and the channel H H is a channel for a, a houses, the yeah, reform houses, style houses is is. Mm, very, there are, uh, there are uh, words, new words and many words in this program. Okay. And yeah, I have seen the show, huh? I like to, sometimes I try to 
watch watch movies only in English. And okay. I read uh, in page and Facebook and or Twitter in English. Yes. Okay. That is interesting. So you practice in a very good way. Definitely movies and shows are one of the most important. And if you read also, it's going to be a very good thing. Uh, and what do you do in your free time? In my free time, uh, uh, watch movies, listen to music, and let sleep. <laughs> Ah, sleep is amazing. <laughs> yes. So what kind of music do you usually listen to? I listen to music, uh, Aiden's music. Ah, okay. Very good. Yeah. I like, really like that. Yes. Like uh, Air Supply, Ava, Chicago, Scorpion. This is my favorite music. Very good, uh, very nice. So what is your favorite song? Do you have a favorite song? And no, really, but uh, is, um, I like so much uh, our, our music. Mm -hmm. Very good, I really love our music. I, I believe, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like all right. It sounds very good nowadays, so. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I believe they were geniuses. They really made very good music. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Dora. Bueno. Okay, so let's check now William Alexander. Hello, William. Not possible. Mm. Juan Miguel Brown. Not possible either. Uh, let me see. Uh, teacher, it was my name? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Because I was I was uh, far from, from the PC, but okay. Okay, very well. If you have the time, we can practice a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, ha I have the time. All right, very good, perfect. So uh, tell me, how do you describe yourself? I will describe myself as a person who likes to help other people. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you have a difficult with your PC and if you call me, I will be... Um, or I, or I could uh, do all the possible in order to, to help you with that, with your uh, issue, yeah. And not only with this, uh, I'm talking in general, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, I'm an easy person, yeah, like a, a easy to, to, to interact with all the people, yeah, but if, if I don't like some something that you do to other people is to like um, I don't know how to say this in English, but como ver de menos a las personas, yeah. Okay. What what is the 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 translation? There is a name for that one. I guess is uh, there was some a phrase that it says look upon the shoulders of other oh, persons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like that, yeah, because I, I think all of us, we deserve all the respect, yeah, but obviously uh, I try to, to give you all the respect that you, that you deserve, but if I'm not receiving the same, I will not treat you, um, not in a disrespectful way, yeah, but um, like uh, distante, yeah. I don't know. It's okay. I, I can I can uh, interact with you, but just then just the need, yeah. 
uh, what else? Uh, I like to to um, to joke with people. Yeah. Uh, some sometimes uh, in a in a hard way. Yeah, but not trying to to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Uh, I think that I can uh, make a this a dis distinction. Yeah, uh, what could uh, hurt your feelings or uh, make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, and I, I I can joke. I like to joke with people. Yeah, um, but if you are not. Uh, if you're not comfortable, I can stop also. Yeah, because, and obviously apologize with you. Um, and obviously I understand that you don't like, what else? Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think that in, in general, yeah, I am a family man. Yeah, I like to, to, to pass um, time or to spend time with my family, with my wife and my kid, also with my with my parents and relatives, yeah. But I like to do some things by my way, yeah. Uh, for example, to uh, maybe to to if, if I'm working in something, I don't like that you. Uh, bothering me yeah for example if if, if you give me a, a task to do i don't like that you come once and another okay did you finish did you finish did you finish no okay give me the time that i need in order to finish the in the quickest way that i can do yeah and not bothering me if i don't understand you if i don't un understand Something I will ask, yeah, but just like this, yeah. Um, what else at work? Uh, or uh -huh. I like to like this, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, I like to spend time with friends also. Uh, for example, go to a bar or to a beer station. Uh, drink some beers, listening to music live, obviously, if it's possible, and talking about life, yeah. And it, it, it's kind of, of funny, but if you know, uh, in my case, yeah, if you know people from your childhood, uh, and if you gathering or if you gather with all that people, you always talk about the same thing and the same things are so funny to you. Yeah. And once and another, maybe we can uh, uh, stay with, with other people and we talk about the same and we laugh about the same. Yeah. We are the same people, yeah. Um, I think that that's kind of my life, yeah. Very, very interesting, very good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I can see that one. Uh, we, everything that you have said, we can, I guess we can reflect that one uh, whenever you speak and things like that one. Uh, how do you see yourself in the next, let's say 10 years? What kind of... <laughs> Juan Miguel Brown we will have in the next 10 years? I would like to live in another country, maybe Canada, yeah. Or maybe in the United States, yeah. But uh, I would like to do in the good way, yeah. Not like mojado or something like this. Obviously in the right way. Uh, trying to uh, to work, yeah, or to having a job in with my knowledge and develop 
my last years of the career in, in another country, if it's possible, yeah. I would like to do because my kid is only five. Yeah, and I would like to, my kid ha, will have another kind of lifestyle. Yeah, not, not like rich people. Yeah, I, I mean like with the freedom that, that the kids need. Yeah, not, okay. uh, not with the fear that uh, if he goes to a place from another in a bus, it could be hard or something like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, 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 I really like this. I would really like it. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so if you say that you would like to move to other country, what country would you like to go to? To Canada. To Canada. Uh, to, to live in another country. In, yeah. in yeah, in Canada. I would like oh. to, to live there. By uh, any chance? If, go ahead. Sorry. Um if I if I'm not mistaken, it, it this country is in the top ten, the most secure countries around the world. Uh, you have obviously there are good salaries, yeah, but the the taxes are so high, but <coughs> sorry, that you have for all the things that that that, that I have written, uh, you have um, a good health system. Yeah, uh, a secure place to live. Yeah, and a good education, yeah. e education also, yeah. In the first years, elementary school and primary school, yeah. Over the next years, you as a father, you have to, to save money, yeah, in order to, to send your, your, your uh, child to the university or college or something like this, but in the first years, I think it's it's uh, kind of of free, gratuita, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you are right. I mean, a lot of opportunities are there. Jobs are very good. The environment is very good. Amazing cities. Uh, also, natural places where you can go. Yeah. And I mean... It's a very good place to live, definitely. It's not that cold. Uh, people are very nice. Uh, I, I really like to watch a show. It's not a show, but uh, on YouTube, you can watch like pranks they do in, in, in Canada. And it's very interesting because you see the reaction of the people sometimes, like this is not correct, right? This is not good. It yeah. seems that everybody does the right thing there in Canada. So that is a very good thing. I mean, you you can be free and you can do whatever you want and nobody is going to bother you. Everybody's, I mean, is going to keep the distance, uh, give you your privacy. It's a very good place. Definitely one of the top countries where you can go. Yeah, so uh, this, this country is, is, is like um, my dream, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's it's not the, the lifestyles is not so so quick or so fast as the United States. I was talking about I was talking with some friends that lives in Canada and they were living in the United States and they told me no here in Canada the life is kind of relaxed. Yeah, obviously you have to work. Yeah, you have to go to work. Uh, pay taxes uh, or something like this, but in the United States, you have to work and work and work and work and no rest. Yeah. In Canada, you have to work and you have also to rest and to work and to rest. Yeah. Uh, because the salaries are good. Yeah. 
but it's not the um, it's not the same social pressure yeah uh -huh. that you have to 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 have many things yeah you can live with the essential things and you are done yeah yeah definitely you are right yeah if you have the chance definitely that is a very good uh, path to go for the for the last part of your life and yeah your kid is going to be much better okay thank you juan miguel and uh, okay my friends uh it was a very good class we spoke about many things remember that tomorrow we have the two homeworks you're going to bring two or three words to present to the class and also the presentation of your uh, business plan so something very not that long i mean yeah you are going to have five six minutes to present that one I mean, you are going to have all the time that you need. Uh, do not uh, try to do something very, very strong, right? So is English the most important part here? Okay. And uh, also remember that we need to finish by tomorrow the midterm test and also the, um, uh, the unit two. That will be it. We're going to check yeah. the attendance then. Okay. We are in the third week. Yeah. Yeah, this is the third week, and you have to finish unit two and the midterm test. Okay. Okay, yeah. David Galdames. Present teacher. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez. Present. Thank you. Dora Elizabeth Flores. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas. Present teacher. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Thank you. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present teacher. Okay, very good. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a wonderful night. Tomorrow is a big day because you are going to present. And uh, if you have questions, just let me know and it will be a pleasure to have you out. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Dream in English. Bye. Good evening. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night. If you have questions right now, of course, you can stay. Hello, Juan Miguel. Uh, do you have some questions or do you need any support on something? Sorry, just asking uh, that um, we are in the three from five weeks, yeah? Yeah, this is the third week from five, yeah. Okay, okay, just that. Thank you, teacher. It was a pleasure. Have a wonderful night. Yeah, I, I really like the, the class of today. Oh, perfect. It was very good that, I mean, I try to change things, you know, uh, and uh, I mean, it's very good that we learn and we participate. I really enjoy also the class. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Have, Have a good night. night. Sorry, bye-bye now.